I don't know if I like the sound of myself like that. It makes me feel weird. Name how fucking... everyone else feels. Yeah. God, it's the Jack It Off podcast. Where are these guys buried? Well, I don't know. Probably in the same place, but they just don't do anything. Dead. Episode number 33. Yeah. As I spoke earlier, it's just water and coffee today because too many beers last night. It, I was trying to come up with a clever name for Fortnite that could involve a drinking game. And I still can't figure it out. You just keep drinking until you can't play anymore. I mean, that's not a very succinct title. It's certainly the concept <laughs> of the game, but I can't... Usually like, the best wanna... title describes the game, like Mousetrap. <laughs> just, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. Life, that's just what it is, life, man. Life. Life. The game of life. Everyone's <laughs> playing, no one's winning. You know what I'm saying, yeah. dude? Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys want to play a game of life? It's called Get Blackout Drunk and Play Fortnite. <laughs> Get lucky in the game of life. With the pop o matic popper. In the game of life. <laughs> so. So what? I'm not feeling very robust. I can tell you that. How much later did you guys stay up? Uh, I was up till 7. You were up till <laughs> 7 in the goddamn morning. Uh, <laughs> what, when did everybody else leave? When did Jess leave? Jess left. Mm, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, a few too many uh, Serenat Green Thumb whatever the fuck IPAs I was drinking that and orange Bud Lights too Ooh. and those just go down terribly <laughs> terribly those are delicious what are you talking about orange Bud Light it feels like it's that sounds like it'd be too like Brent sweet or just something. try like it Bud Light Lime is enough no, it's it's less sweet than Bud Light. You gotta try it. it you gotta like, do it. It tastes you like drinking it, dude. orange seltzer water. High C. <laughs> it's an adult. It's adult high C orange beverage. It really is. You got. <clears throat> I'll send you one in the mail. Okay, go ahead. Put it. Get it to the PO box. Yeah. I'll go and pick it up and drink it on the way home. <laughs> So Bud I'll, Light, I'll put it in one of those Omaha steak uh, <laughs> containers with some dried ice. Yo, I got this really good idea for mail order service. So here's what I do, right? I buy a <laughs> beer that you could buy anywhere else, even around you at any one moment right now. And I send it to you in a tiny styrofoam container. That's not the fucking point. The point is you're too lazy to go out and buy one. It's called Dylan beer. <laughs> Dylan sends it to you. It's he, it's me. And that's it. He, that's what he does. He puts a picture of himself in every one, and he just says, hey, it's Dylan, here's a beer. Drink this non-craft beverage. You're going to uh, love it. Trust me. <clears throat> um, a special edition. Special edition. It did feel like a special edition last night. It felt like all the players, all the players were there. Everybody was trickling in. All the major, all, oh. all the major idols, all the fucking American idols were coming in, coming in hot, and losing quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. So you, a re- you played. I think Jess got off just like just after you did. Oh okay. Not much longer, maybe like one or two more games. Of because uh, you played with, with Damon, friends. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and then yeah, Damon got on when we were playing golf with friends. And then we went over to Overwatch and played that with Steve for a little while. And then we went back to Fortnite for a couple rounds. And by that point, I couldn't play for to save my life. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Uh, Andrew was he was drinking Jameson's, as I recall. Is he, that's what he and started ice. in on when he got home. He was all pissed off because of that fucking jabron that, what, what was it? He had his fucking high beams on behind him, blaring yeah. in his face. 
Oh, Vernon. Classic. Classic Vernon. Um, wow. You know what I... This is so weird. I woke up this morning... Well, waking up this morning is two different things for me because um, after I got off last night, I felt I felt faint. I think I had a case of the vapors. Well, you stayed up about 100 hours later than you usually stay up. I was like, oh... Oh, my stars. I don't believe I can make it to the bedroom. So <clears throat> I just crashed on the day bed out here. <laughs> I just laid down, fucking went to sleep. <laughs> Woke up about eh, four and a half hours later, probably around like 730, something like that. 730, 740. Went into my bedroom. Becky was still sleeping. I fucking just crawled into bed. I closed my eyes for like 10 seconds. And I'm like, wait, she's got to wake up for work. Becky, wake go wake up for work. Hey, hey. Hey, wake up for work. Get yeah, out of here. Of all, I want the bed. <laughs> first of all, wake up for work because you gotta go to work. Second, get out of my bed. So she woke up and then I slept. I slept for like another four hours in bed. Oh, a full woke eight? up at like twelve thirty or a something full like eight? that. Huh? Wow, you woke up at twelve thirty? Holy shit. I don't know how that <laughs> happened. Like, it's not normal that, like, and I mean, we've experienced this from times where we've stayed up. Like, it could be till umpteen o'clock in the fucking morning. I mean, unless it's until the hour that I normally wake up in the morning, <laughs> I'm still going to wake up the time that I wake up in the morning. It's like a biological fucking clock. So if we stay up till three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to get five hours of sleep because I'm going to wake up at eight no matter what. Um... But this time when I woke up, I felt like such garbage. I didn't even really like for me, I really don't even think I drank that much under the circumstances. I think probably what put me over the edge was like the rest of that vodka that was in that bottle. I mixed with the grapefruit orange dry. Oh, I mean, that's probably what opened the, the floodgates for the for the lethargy that later set in at around three. And then, you know, earlier this afternoon. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, and when I woke up, I had, first of all, I had the most fucked up dreams. I don't know. Sometimes when you, I don't know why this is, but when you sleep in other locations, I feel like you have more fucked up dreams. Like even just in your own house. Like if you fall asleep on your couch in your house on accident, or like if you, if you're like, a, even at like at somebody else's house and you fuck, like fall asleep on the floor, them dreams is going to be fuck it. That's going to be like a fever dream. It's going to be like George Lynch. Or uh, not George Lynch, fucking David Lynch. George Lynch is a guitarist for fucking uh, Lynch Mob and the other more popular band, Dokken. Anyway. Um, I had a weird fucked up dream, and then popular I... Popular band, Dokken. <laughs> popular band, Dokken. I don't think those words are Popular band spoken. that you can hire for your quinceanera, Dokken. Ah, Yes. I'm going to, yeah, so my mom told me that I could hire a band, but I could only spend like $3,000. Who should I get? And it's probably either like Dockin or Warrant is really what uh, you got you there. You should uh, hire Dockin and save the other $2,500. For booze. <laughs> For booze. In order to tolerate who's ever's in Dockin now. Um, it's Doc Dockin. Anyway, Doc Dockin. <laughs> Doc. It's old Dr. Dockin. <laughs> PhD. <laughs> they call me Doctor Dokken. It's a PhD. It's not an MD. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, the weird dreams, and then when I woke up, I don't know why, but I instantly <laughs> had like this weird nostalgia trip in my brain where I f went back to like fucking it had to have been 1996. So you piss your your bed to bed. No, no, that is not what I did. Uh, this weird it does have to do trip. with anatomy. It does have to do with anatomy and in the most non-sexual way that you can possibly imagine. I was say, did you accidentally rediscover masturbation? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whoa, I just forgot I could do this. Uh, I remembered when I was a kid, my... I had well, fucking like a shitty IBM... <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Steve, how could you? <laughs> mm. My? All right, your shitty IBM. 
shitty IBM beige box that they had and like everybody had seemed like more people had computer rooms in the 90s than most oh, people yeah. do now. You know the compu- like the idea of the computer room is something that I think we don't have anymore like maybe all, the only people that still have computer rooms are like I, they got to be over 40. Like my dad has a com- like this is a computer room has like a shitty e, you know e-machines tower computer in there and the fucking like all of the boxes for all of your electronics are in there. That's the computer room. That's a place. In my grandparents' computer room, they had a copy of Microsoft Encarta. On, uh, I they, I want to say online encyclopedia because I think it came with a copy of America Online where you could like fuse the two components together and make like your own little Wikipedia. And then, the but this is really what I thought about. There was this CD... Um, that I think may have came with in Carter, or maybe it came separately, but it's called Body Works. Oh, and I it's remember by, that. Do you remember Body Works? Yeah. I don't think anybody remembered it. Yeah, it's got like <laughs> it's got like a muscle man on the cover or something. Yes, it's yeah. it's like, like a it's like an um, it's like a three the mo the last I did some research subsequently <laughs> after this, so forgive me if this sounds like like I've known it all my life, <laughs> but. Uh, Body Works 6 was for, I think, Windows 95 to Windows 98. And it was the first one that had um, fully rendered exploded views of all the different things. Like, before that, it was like, you know, because like th- this one, you could, like, revolve around shit and you could, like, remove layers and, and all this. 3D graphics insanity. at its finest. Dude, back in the day, that felt like that was the most educational experience a kid could get at that time and it not be fucking stupid and boring. I mean, and here's the only other exceptions. Once I sort of got onto Body Works, I started thinking about it and I was like, like there was other there was other stuff at that time that I was fucking obsessed with. And it's coming back like as I'm thinking about like that computer and like other people's computers of the time. And fucking Freddy Fish came up. Do you remember Freddy Fish? I've I I I I know of Freddy Fish. I've never like the other obviously the like Freddy um, Fish. I forget who it was by, but Freddy Fish probably like uh, I want to say it was like Sierra, but something. it was oh, actually might, actually I, I didn't think it is Sierra. I say. think the learning company actually was Body Works. Now that you say that, because I remember reading it when I was looking it up earlier on. But um, Freddie Fish was one of them, and the other one was Putt Putt Golf, <laughs> or not? No, Putt Putt. Fuck, Humongous Entertainment. That's what it was. Humongous made all these fucking like um, adventure games, point and click adventure games. Uh, one of them was Freddie Fish. The other one was Putt Putt. Probably the one that most people are familiar with in like the modern era was Pajama Sam because that kept going. Like I think they still make um, stuff out of that. Um, and then of course Reader Rabbit, the Zumbinis, and then more well known than anything else is Backyard Baseball. Mario so teaches when... typing. <laughs> if they got if they got that fucking uh isn't there a resident they got evil those typing rights, god damn there was uh no typing of the dead Type, was, yeah that was, was uh, yeah house of the dead uh and it was a zo- there was a zombie game i really wish there was a goddamn resident evil typing game you know how much bad dialogue you could work through if you just wanted to use <laughs> that and just be like no just fucking typing no jill don't open that door and there's just, like, like uh, has all the shit dialogue pieces and someone like this is you're supposed there's supposed to be a period right here, <laughs> not in between they teach every you, word. They teach you proper grammar and diction by you it's telling you what not to do in a traditional voice acting session. <laughs> in terms of writing, everything it's te- learning playing Resident Evil director's cut teaches you everything you need to know about how not to do writing and voice acting. Uh, and somewhat some level design too. I mean, let's be honest with each other. Um, there was some real disconnected components of that fucking game in terms of walking around and doing stuff. That's this is pretty bad. There's backyard soccer too, right? There's... There was oh my god, 
There was backyard everything. I'm, I'm surprised fucking eventually we didn't have backyard cricket. Well, that's, fucking it's backyard just fucking lawn darts. baseball, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, but I that was just so weird that I woke up and I just had had all those thoughts about those old games. Like, I used uh, to get um, they used to sell like, I want to say maybe Big Lots or something would sell like sounds right. Sell like a like a four pack of like oh s- yeah of games and like some of them were point and click adventures and then there was like a find the difference in the picture or like where's yeah. all the bullshit. There, there was. It's so weird because it that stuff doesn't exist now. The kind uh, of game that we're talking sure about, sure it does, but there's a thousand games, so to find it is nearly impossible. I guess to try, it seemed like in the. It seemed like in the time that we're talking about, and also you could probably just go on Steam and download those games. So I actually do think that it was either GOG or some other company that actually bought the rights, I think, out for all those humongous entertainment games. Maybe that's what I'll do on a Twitch stream. Let's just roll through some fucking Freddy Fisher, some goddamn Putt Putt adventures. Putt Putt kicked major ass. That game was fucking phenomenal. Uh, you know, what? Was- one of my favorite oh. games of one of those is. Uh... I'm looking at it right now. The Lost Mind of Doctor Brain. Oh, I think I remember that. That was I used to play that all the time. Did you? You had a, you had a Mac, didn't you? Like an old Mac. Yeah. Wasn't that what? It, that was something you had back I in had, the day. I had I had a Mac. I had an all-in-one Mac, and I had the, the like the monitor and tower deal too. You, you had. Did you have the original transparent iMac? No. No? I, 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 you had the I, one I, before that. Yeah. So I, I uh, yeah, well before that. The uh, Mac 2? What's it? I don't know. Or the fucking, it, uh, the Lisa was before that. I mean, the Lisa's way early. It was, but... it was the all-in-one, and it had a disk drive and a, a floppy drive yeah. right on front of it. I think that was the Mac 2 or something like it. But then, uh, but yeah, what then games I, I, I did, had what PC. Games did you play on that? I don't know. Was it like a was know. it like a thing that you had to like program shit on? No, like the games I play I'm pretty sure like I played like the backyard baseball. I think that ran on it. Really? Like, I played like all those yeah, all those games ran on it. I'm pretty huh. sure cuz it was basically a PC. Right. They were closer. At that they were point, closer at that yeah. Apart. Point. Yeah, at that point they were like There was more supported for each thing. Well, and then obviously fuck even before that like uh, especially that was the the fucking the big or time period for max too was around that yeah, time that so when, all those was, companies would be making like, them for both destroy. and a, a lot of schools had those max in them so yep. why wouldn't the educational companies that of course they would be programming for the schools to put them in there I think there's so much saturation now with all that stuff. Either that, or it's, I'd I'd like to see like what the modern example of something like this is. Like if I were, to, like if 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 you were to sit a kid down. I mean, I guess it's all on iPads. Yeah, that's really what we're talking about is mobile app development in that space because it really translates pretty well to that. They should fucking. Well, that's because everything was point. Doesn't... Everything was point and click. There's no reason to have to sit in yeah. front of a computer to play it. No. If Humongous hasn't put all those fucking games on an iPad, they're dumb. I think they have actually. The goddamn nostalgia factor mm. involved is got is over the roof. Like parents wanting their kids to play that old shit that they used to play. Let's I mean and even even well before that. I remember going to and this is even a more far-reaching memory because I can't quite remember what games there were because there were so many. But I remember my mom used to work at a salon. Do you, Dylan, you know where the, you know, the little plaza that's coming down towards the trailer park before yeah, yeah. the old house? Yeah. On the left hand side, if you're coming towards my, my trailer park, if you go in there now, I think is like, what, like a tattoo parlor they, and like I a think couple the tattoo parlor is gone. 
All right. Well, that I mean, there's like an antique antique shop with yeah. the Flintstone out front. Yes, that's it. Okay, so that that exact storefront right there was a salon, uh, probably I'm gonna say probably 20 years ago, 20 25 years ago. My mom Remember used that to pizza take place me. That was there. They had pizza place. Yes, they had some banging pizza, and then they, it was really good. They had the ice cream shop. They put in like right next to yep. it. That ice cream shop was really good too. That was a place that had there was a okay. So here's Jesus Christ. We're, I'm getting off on a fucking huge tangent, but here we go. Um, Pizza's good. When when <laughs> <laughs> when when Coneheads used to be in Oneida and it wasn't like fucking um, Timmy's or whatever the fuck it is, or, you know Christopher's or whatever the fuck that was. Coneheads to me probably had. One of the, I mean, Coneheads, Bonomo's, like, these are the iconic ice cream places. But it, they had this actually ice makes cream. their own ice cream. Well, that Does that's the other thing. Coneheads? I don't, that I kind don't of know that they did. explains this. Coneheads used exclusively Hershey products, um, I think, for all the ice creams. And back in the day... No, very few people remember this, but there was an ice cream that was called Dinosaur Crunch. And what it was, was the ice cream was electric blue, like artificial as fuck blue. And it had a fudge swirl and chocolate covered kicks in it. That That's what it was. They, like kicks, like, like fucking regular rice kick cereal covered in chocolate and then stuffed in there. That was the ice cream. It was my favorite fucking ice cream. I loved it. I, to this day, I research it every once in a while. I still don't think it's there, like, uh, out there anywhere. Um, I might have found little traces of it here and there throughout the years, but I just wanted to mention that because that ice cream parlor that was in that plaza was the only other place that had it. Huh. It was only Coneheads and whatever the hell the name of that one in, that, in there was. But what I wanted to get to was that along – so there's a pizza place, ice cream parlor, and then the salon. My mom worked for that salon for about five or six years with this woman, Carla. And Carla. Carla. Um, my mom was doing nails and Carla was doing hair at the time. And my mom, during the summer when I wasn't in school, would have to take me in there and I would hang out there like for a few hours, maybe until like either my dad or my stepdad, whoever the hell picked me up or whatever, when they got out of work. But when I was there, she had like a shitty computer in the lobby. Lisa, like Lisa, tell Brent to stop eating the hair. <laughs> <laughs> it explains so much, doesn't it? He's drinking uh, the comb cleaner's juice again. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I sat myself down in front of this computer and I remember I think it had like again probably Windows 98 on it. And when you go to the start menu, there was a fucking category or there was a there was a start menu entry that had like when you hovered over it, it created four columns of fucking games on the right hand side of it it was like one of those cd collections that's like over four cds and it's like shit loads of games like it has to be a thousand shit, shit being could, you couldn't yeah the well, descriptor of it too, yeah there was a couple games on there <clears throat> that elude me so profoundly in terms of what they were that I'll probably never ab be able to either figure out what that collection was, it just to even have a hope of figuring out like what the games were on it, and j the ones that I played, because I'm pretty sure stuff like um l like Lemmings might have been on there. I mm, yeah, probably. Really that sounds about right. It's of that time, but also there was this one. That was probably one of the bangers on there, and then. <laughs> the rest of it was garbage. Yeah, they yeah, they got to rope you in, give you the old rope a dope. I feel so. Do you remember the game Hexagon? Hexagon. Now we have a modern yes. game called Yes. But there was a Hexagon game I think that had like two X, three X, two X's. That was made by um, I feel like the, it was a singular developer. You can play it in browser now. 
Mexican. But that game was so fucking good. It Is was that the basically one where you like jump your pieces and Yeah, it was on a purple hexagonal playboard and you had red jewels and blue like water droplets. Yeah. And the animations were basically like the red jewel would like flip over and it'd be like <laughs> shing sparkle sparkle. Like that's the idea of the like you it was basically Chinese checkers. The, the, the yeah, you jump, you jump like mm-hmm. in between two pieces, and then they turn your color. And the point is to let me see if I can, if you can pick this up over the. Yeah. Yep. See that? Um, are you I think... sure? Are you sure you were in a salon and your mom just didn't take you to a bar and you're playing on a touch <laughs> magic? <laughs> on a on a on a mega touch. Um. Well, that's possible, and it probably wasn't my mom. It was probably my dad. <laughs> Going on down to the Verona Hotel. Here, oh, sit in front yeah, of this and play a couple titty games. Hey, play this computer. <laughs> Here, bro. Here's a computer. Look at this, look. You know what this is? Look this at is these like two the pictures. I bought you a home. Look at these two pictures right here. See what what see what pictures different. See what the left titty is a little lower on this picture you, than the other titty. If, if you match up what's different about this picture and the other picture. Titty ladies will come on the screen. Look, it's cool. Look, 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 Michigan J. Frog. Scan across. Hello, my honey. Hello, my lady. Hello, my ragtime gal. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> playing the titty uh, games. Yeah, playing the titty games, dude. Uh, the uh, So... There was one more game. This is the one that I can never remember. It was like I the way the best way I can describe it was it kind of felt like Earthworm Jim, but it was with like a little alien guy. Like it was like an alien like a Toe Jam I don't know if it was like uh what is it? Toe Jam and Earl? No, it was a singular alien guy. And he was alien like a green and he had like a set he had like a set no, that's so late. Uh <laughs> New Rounds, like a, baby, like, what's up? <laughs> he had like a fucking like backwards hat on he was so cool it was like a cool fucking hip-hop alien dude that was again maybe not so polished as earthworm jim but I, that's the best way i can sort of draw a parallel to it um jack jack rabbit i th- like i said i think all of these games were like uh, either they were like an answer to a sort of a previously established well, if, franchise if lemmings was on there then it- there must have been some sort of. I don't know. I, I, I can't quite remember if any of all of them had. Like I'm telling you, Dylan, it was so many goddamn games. I don't think all of them had major like appeal or either or like that they were a part of like a major developer or something like that. It wasn't like a collection of games that were like by like. Sierra and Humongous and like all these other like retro fucking uh, development companies. It was like one dude making a game, or maybe they made all of the games for the same thing. Like they just set out there, like we got to do one of these thousand and one game fucking things. Somebody come up with some horse shit. I have all these assets. Fucking <laughs> smash them together. Yeah, dude, get into make game some platformers. Let's go. Yeah, make a bunch of platformers. Um. This platformer, you're a cool alien with a backwards hat. Yo, dude. Watch out for the humans. You don't want them to catch you because they'll send you back to space. You got stupid cool hip-hop style. <laughs> Are you sure you're not uh, thinking of that one movie with... Uh, a movie? <laughs> the, what's his name? Christopher Lloyd in it? Or he's the alien? Oh, my God. The, uh, <laughs> he's a hip alien. That, uh... It was a movie? Yeah, remember he had the antennas that came out of his head? He was an alien. But what was the, what was like the game that was like that? Like that what? point and click game where it was like, it looked like Roger Rabbit with Christopher Lloyd. It was an absolute like shit Toonstruck. game. Toonstruck. Toonstruck, that's what it was. Um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like that. It was, it was a movie. It kind of also reminded me of like Rocket Knight Adventures. Do you remember that game? No. There was a game that was for I think it was originally for Sega. It actually ended up on one of the uh, one of the Sega collections, the thirty two and one Sega collection series. Um, Rocket Knight was like one of those under the radar, like was it was that, their like, the, answer to Sonic, the, the rat or the mouse or the squirrel. 
he yeah, was like a fox backpack. or a squirrel. Yeah. Okay. Your mechanic was that you could jetpack around, kind of. Yeah. It actually was a mechanic that a lot of people borrowed later on. Like, like that 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 style ended up like in a shitload of other games. I mean, very popular ones too. Like there was a jetpack style game for um, iOS and Android that jet, was like jet, super jet, fucking popular. Jump jetpack. Jet, jetpack Joyride. Jetpack Joyride. That's the one. that game was fucking so popular, really, and it was it was exactly like Rocket Knight. It's like the same shit. Um, and then the other one was uh, the other amazing game for that too that I loved a lot was. Uh, it was a game where you had the choice of three different weapons, and it was a it was a um, it was like playing like 1942 because the it's it was a bullet hell, not a bullet hell. What the fuck are those games that's just constant shooting? What's the name for twin, it? Like a twin stick shooter. Twin stick, yes, kind of like twin stick. Only in this era, it wasn't because you had no sticks. You were it was. You pressed, you held the button for it to shoot, and then it went in all different directions, like a Contra type thing. That was probably more similar to what it was. It was like a Contra, but I'm trying to remember the name of it. You were you played, um, you played on these crazy fucking levels where you were on like, uh, on like a, a ocean liner, like a military ocean liner type thing, and the fucking backgrounds would move like crazy and shit. And you were firing all these different kinds of weapons all over the goddamn place. <laughs> it was nuts. What's, what's that called? Where the background was? Um... What were you saying? Nothing. Nothing. Were you trying to figure out what I was saying? What talking the, about the what the one the back room uh, parallax scrolling? <laughs> yeah, the the background in this game was like super parallax. Yeah, like it was enough to make you funny. sick. Um, but it was there around in that same time as Rocket Knight. And I think it was from the same, uh, what the hell was that? Fucking goddamn motorcycles driving by. <laughs> get off my lawn. Get, get out of here. Get out of here with that shit. Quiet that thing down. I'm trying to sleep in here. Shit. It's only three o'clock. Three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm trying to sleep. Uh, but yeah, that, that, uh, that wildly insane nostalgia trip was brought to you by my favorite uh, Martian. Price chopper coffee what is it my favorite martian what the hell are we talking about that christopher lloyd movie oh jesus christmas my no. favorite martian yeah that's the one <laughs> he's got the this whole antennas. episode is just the thing where we were distracted from talking to each other because we're looking up everything we say. Hey, bullshit. I came up with parallax scrolling while I was looking for <laughs> what you... <laughs> I was half listening. Um, You're I'm trying to blast them right like... in my ears. I can't not hear you. <laughs> All I hear is I'm you and that literally... fucking motorcycle driving by. I'm going to literally search for Contra type shooter for Sega and see if that Contra hardcore. Contra Hardcore. Good good Contra similar games. Super Oh, that's fucking Super Nintendo. I don't want that. Oh my god, I found it though. What uh Super Turrican. Let me see if I could get you a picture of it. Super Turrican was fucking and I think they even had Mega Turrican. Uh, I, 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 I'll, I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Keep talking. I'll look it up. 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 Super Turrican was incredible. Elizabeth um, Hurley is in my favorite Martian too. <laughs> my favorite Devil. You know, no, but, it wasn't Super Turrican, but it was yeah, that was it, one of bedazzled. them. Bedazzled. Super Turrican was really, really good, man. Oh my god. Uh, games like Super Turrican. Oh, Brendan Fraser played. The same character, pretty much, in for twenty in, years in Bedazzled and Monkey Bone. Similar. See, wow, Giant Bomb is a good resource for other games that are like Super Turrican. Um. Oh, looky, Duke Duke Nukem Ranger X. Oh my God. Wow, this. Color I'm gonna have to look through like a list of ROMs for Sega. Uh, 
to figure out what the fuck this is later on. But anyway. That Super Turrican has quite the color palette. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Every background is like a gradient. <laughs> Uh, otherwise known as every project that I completed in college. <laughs> oh, you know what this needs? A fucking gradient, dude. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Look how that blue turns into that orange. It's amazing. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Sparkster. Sparkster was another one. Are you just naming games now? Let's move yes, on. Yes, I to, am our naming next topic. games because I want people to know. I let's want let's people talk about to know. ice cream again. <laughs> talk about ice cream. All right, let's talk about ice cream, okay? Uh, Remember, Conheads fucking... had that kitchen sink ice cream. What? Where was it? Where? What's what was that? It? Wasn't that a call? It was like the challenge, wasn't it? Like the kitchen sink challenge. Oh yes. Oh no. Christopher's had that, not Coneheads, because when Christopher's moved in, they did that kitchen sink thing, and I got it one time. Big surprise. And it's insane. Um, I can't even eat a regular sized Sunday. Dude, you know what? I can't. I still to this day can't fit. Or I finish, and it makes me feel like I want to kill myself. Is the Moose Tracks Monster Sub Sunday from fucking Nicky Doodles? And sometimes I'll come home and I'll be like, I want that so bad, and then I'll go eat it. I was like, it's like fucking candy corn. Why the fuck am I eating this again? I know that it makes me feel like a garbage pile. Do I just have Alzheimer's every time that I fucking I eat it? I always get one of their Sundays. I have like three bites of it, and I'm like, okay, I'm good. I'm going to bring it home, put it in the freezer. I, this is, a, this done is that two pints of ice cream. Oh. <laughs> um, hey, what yeah, are you doing I today? Can... You want to come down and go get some Nicky Doodles? <laughs> is there a Nicky Doodles in between me and you? We can meet halfway. <laughs> Yeah, it's called the one that's right near you. <laughs> that's the, that's is not... that a local? Yeah, is it? They got fr they got it. Yeah, there's nothing up here that's like that. Um, I guess that's weird to me. Just whatever. It's like... franchised out, but yeah, it's yeah, that's... only in your area. There's only like three of them or something. Yeah, that's why it's weird that it's only in like because because there's actually three of them. <laughs> um, they're like around sustainable uh... enough to, uh, I guess, have three of them. Where most ice cream places can't even stay open for. <laughs> what a lucrative business opportunity. Yeah. It's warm eight days out of the year here. Yeah, exactly. The other nine, it's raining, and then there's snow for the rest. I'm going to tell you this, though, right now. Don't tell me. There, it, Don't tell me you love me. Don't tell uh, me. Don't tell me. All right, there tell is me. a All nice right, cream me. place up here. <laughs> All right, tell me. <laughs> There's a place up here called Humpty Dumpty's, which definitely sounds like an ice cream parlor name. I don't think yeah. there's anything more appropriate than that shit. I'm pretty sure there's a Humpty Dumpty's in Frankfurt. Um, <laughs> the one that's here <laughs> is, without a doubt, of legend. Like, I uh, I see people out there on, like, a hot summer, like, Saturday. Like, like a day like yesterday. There's people out there, and I, I don't even think they know where the line is. I don't think they know how to get into the line. The line is basically, a, it's like the fucking Pretty Patties episode of Spongebob, where the fucking, it's just a sea of people out in front of the place just hey, fucking like trying to boat up to the window. How do those people not make a fucking million dollars? I don't care if an ice cream is a buck seventy-five, a scoop. Like... <laughs> They they have to be printing money because they serve food too. It's actually pretty good too, kind of like Voss's. Well, that's the problem. Everyone goes there for the ice cream, but they still gotta keep the food up and going. Like the I mean, that's the same thing with Voss's in Utica. It's like they 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 literally have as good. Of don't, a don't, like don't. fucking pulled you watch pork your sandwich. Mouth. You watch your mouth. What do you mean? You watch your mouth. What? Try and dis disparage Vosses. No, I'm. It's quite the opposite. I'm saying they have as good of a pulled pork sandwich and a hot dog as like any other place around there. Like legit good food for a fucking divey diner hop place that also has ice cream. Like. 
it was remarkable the first time I ever went there and didn't get a fucking pistachio milkshake. Go to fucking Voss's and get your ass a pistachio milkshake. That's just a, that's just an overall statement that I want to make. Just like just get that because it is one of the best ones out there. You know, it's, it's good. so fucking good. I oh, I've only had it once, and it was at some Frankfurt ass ice cream place, <laughs> and it was the special. It was the Red Bull milkshake. Oh my god! <laughs> they Oof. basically dumped Red Bull in a vanilla milkshake. Let me tell you, Brent. I can't imagine it I've wouldn't had, be I, bad because I've had Red it Bull once. is fairly acidic. Yeah, I've had it once, and that's that's all. I, I've you never stopped talking about it. Probably over ten years ago, I had it, and I to this day I still can't not talk about how good it was. There was and I've never seen it anywhere else ever again. There was a place when I lived in Frankfurt, um, right on that main drag when you went all the way down the road and you started to head into Ilian. Right before you got to Ilian, there was a place called the Night Spot, K N I G H T. They had fucking amazing ice cream products in there. First of all, out front, but also is that the one that's on a, a restaurant? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's there's a restaurant, a restaurant in it. It's a yeah. restaurant. Yeah. And then there's like the ice cream window out on. Uh-huh. On the side. It's that's, in like a brown building. Yeah, that's where I had the Red Bull milkshake. It is not. Yep. Oh yep. my god, Dylan. Well, we're going to have to go there now. That's the place. Um not only have I had like fucking awesome Sundays and shit there. I had an apple pie Sunday there that was like it was fucking brain blower. But um I also had this, this burger called the Fat Boy Burger, which was like named after the Harley Fat Boy, and it was a it was like this huge fucking burger, like a really like like a giant legit quarter pound burger. Um, what are you trying to say? What do you mean? What, you, what was that? There's a little a dig at you, um, um, old Ronald right there. Yeah, you're making it. Fuck making that. A... Fuck that. Fuck, fucking clown. <laughs> that piece of shit clown. <laughs> making the old dig. Yeah. Come at me, McDonald's. Okay. Go fuck yourself. Quarter pounder um, is not that much. No. Well, I should say that it was probably like a half pound burger then, because this was a legitimately pretty large burger. I mean, we're talking. It, it's big. Um, and it had, you know, you like can your a giant onion ring later. on it. Mm, barbecue sauce. It was actually like their version of like a tangy French bar- st- style barbecue sauce. Okay, okay, but so barbecue like, sauce nonetheless. I feel like if you're gonna have an onion ring on a burger, it's gotta have that on. It's it gotta have barbecue like sauce. It. It's gotta. You gotta put barbecue sauce on it. Otherwise, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Yeah, you're not making. I mean, listen. If it's not a rodeo burger, then what the fuck is it? Like, like, don't put the onion ring on. it. Put the onion, onion ring on, on the side. <laughs> but it had, it had like their own like dressing on it that was like again, it was somewhere like in between like a French and or Russian. See, dressing I'm all about. I'm sauce. all about sauces, right? Oh, you know yeah. me. I'm all about mm-hmm. sauces. So when I go to a restaurant and they got their own special sauce. I gotta have. I it. gotta have it, and I gotta have some on the side, to just to and make I sure. gotta buy some on the way out if they put it in <laughs> jars or in a bottle, so I can take it home. through the gift shop. Let me get. The, uh, <laughs> let me get that. <laughs> I'm gonna get the spice rub. Look, if I'm in Simeon's, I'm gonna get the uh, fucking you, spice rub and the dressing and gotta. all the other well, shit. Well, you don't gotta get the dressing. You just get a fucking a money sack filled with the seasoning, and then you just make your own dressing <laughs> Mix it with oil and vinegar. Um, like those things literally have the. Like what? Like the part? Like the uh, dressing directions on dress, it. Yeah, right yeah. on. Like attached to it. It's like this much. How to make the dressing? This much red wine vinegar. This much oil. That's all it is. Uh, and then oh, I think I'm gonna. I got some of that seasoning. Oh, I'm gonna make do something with it some today. Speeders or some shit. Uh, you know what I love doing is making some macaroni and just you know putting the dressing on on the macaroni. Really? Like some tortellini? Oh yeah, Tor- you get some tortellini, get some chicken. I feel like it would be great as just like if you did it as like a cold pasta salad, if it all settled down and you were just gonna like 
make the tortellini and then the rest That's of it just you, gets cold and then it's make, fucking amazing either way. Yeah, exactly. You make the whole bag and you got a cold macaroni salad for later, but hot macaroni for dinner. Whatever for now. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> what time Dylan, is it? Dylan, your whole life is all right. Hot macaroni now, cold macaroni <laughs> later. All right, I'm okay. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Hot it's, macaroni now. It's go a macaroni pizza. Later. <laughs> so, the night spot. We gotta go. I think we definitely gotta get out there. Get the old classics. If if anything, Utica does have an amazingly rich food culture. <laughs> More than you would ever think it had, and actually more than I realized that it did at the time. Like, now that I left, every once in a while, I'm like, hmm. I can't get that anymore. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I'm just like, I want upside-down pizza. Can't have it. I want some old skinnets. <laughs> I, want, I want some scuzzy, and I can't have it. I want some, some Napoli's fucking... See there, cold pizza. <laughs> cold pizza, hot pizza now. Hot, cold hot, pizza, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Cold pizza now, hot pizza later. Who gives a shit? It's Utica. <laughs> it's Sunday. We're getting cold pizza for breakfast, dude. This is like a temperature play all the fucking time. Just different temperatures of all different foods. That's how we live it out here. Because everybody, everybody basically in Utica is just drinking like constantly, just to live their life. So they're just buying food at either temperature, getting drunk and eating it all the time. And then it just goes back in the fridge, and then you eat it again. It's like going to like going to Palermo's in Utica when Becky used to fucking live at Cottage over near Munson Williams Proctor. We would go over to Palermo's, and they would give us mozzarella sticks that had already coagulated. Oh. Now think about it in your mind, Dylan. Oh. Uh, picture the picture the majesty of this moment. Okay? Those are my favorite. We would okay. Here's here's where it gets good. Stop! I can only get so Sorry. erect. <laughs> we we would we would be at cottage, and we would be out of our minds, and we would walk out uh, down fucking fifteen hundred flights of stairs. I still don't know how I didn't kill myself this to this day. Rickety ass narrow Victorian fucking stairs coming out <laughs> to the street. I had stumbled my ass down to the street, and then we walk over. You know where that Dunkin' Donuts is on the circle? Uh huh. To go past that, Palermo's was right across the street. So we'd cross the circle. Palermo's was right over there. It was it's it was the tiniest little fucking piece of shit pizza shop in the world. It's still there. Um, and, and we would described get... every pizza shop in Utica. Oh, yeah. That's true. The fucking the wooden screen door. With the, <laughs> the screens like stapled to the wood. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> uh, with the fucking with the fucking cooler that had the sodas in it and the salads. And then whenever they would take the salads out, they would put them on top of the fucking pizza. So that when you got them, the goddamn lettuce at the bottom of the fucking salad was cooked. Everyone the in fucking... there is sweating because the, no none of them have air conditioning. Not one none. pizza place no, has air conditioning. No, no, no. So we would go in there. We'd open up that springy piece of shit fucking wooden screen door. And it'd make that iconic sound. And then you walk in onto those fucking beige tile shitty floors. And then you hear the door bouncing behind you. And then you. you hear the fucking door crack against the fucking molding. And then you'd go in and then they'd have that quadruple fucking 10 mile high pizza fucking just sitting out in the open on the trays with no heat lamp on it. And then those would be the ones that they'd throw the slices they'd throw in the oven if you were going to do that. But then the magic, this is the magic. The other side that had uh, the other side of the counter that had 15,000 fucking little styrofoam takeaway <clears> containers <throat> filled with mozzarella sticks pre fried, and they're just sitting there. <laughs> doesn't get no better than that. It doesn't get. Like but, um, and so, like this is one of what's those. What's the over where... under on the the garlic knots sitting out with the uh, the pizza too? One hundred percent, right? <laughs> Cheers, you called it. Mm. And also ham the... and pepperoni rolls. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what about spinach? I can't remember. Spinach is never a given, but when they I, have I... the spinach, you gotta get the spinach. <laughs> it's 
It's the way, and it's the way your mom would make a spinach roll. They take out that fucking giant gallon of minced garlic, and they're just like, boom! The gar- garlic knots come out of the oven. Base pour butter all over that shit. Sprinkle a fucking giant handful of minced garlic on that one. Then the spinach rolls come out. Fucking take the whole thing of that fucking minced garlic and empty it right over the top of it. I <laughs> see. Uh, you act surprised, but. She's a Utica and a ta- I'm Italian not from, I'm just Italian from this Utica. Is the thing. Like this is the deal. Th- that's that's that that's what they do in, in Utica. So we go in, we get our mozzarella sticks. We I probably we've probably bought them out before. We've probably walked in and be like, give us all of the shitty mozzarella sticks there's that some, are sitting there's out something on your about, counter. There's something about pizza place mozzarella sticks. Mm-hmm. That have that weird breading on them, that's yep. not breadcrumbs. It's like it's like one piece of breading around it. The difference between the two is like, um, well, a good example of this in the frozen realm is the farm rich ones because those don't have breadcrumbs on them. Yeah, they're, they're very close. similar. They're close, but but they're not the, the same. difference. Is is that when I'm going, you go I'm getting mozzarella sticks today? It's a- <laughs> I gotta I gotta leave my house. I didn't plan on leaving the house, but fuck it. I'm going to get fucking mozzarella. So I'm gonna big old bag of farm rich. I'm gonna slap them on the counter at tops. Cash these out, you piece of. Sh- I'm the piece of shit. Not not you. Sorry. Not you. You're not walking out of here with these. I am. <laughs> um, that takes me back too, man. So, all right. You remember the fry daddy? Friday. The presto, the presto fry daddy, the the daddy of all fryers, the greatest of all frying machines. What it was was what they decided was that okay, we've got a lot of technology now. We have a lot of cooking technology. We have all right? of it, all the technology. We've got it's so all much. Here. But I think what what it really what we're really boiling this down to is it's too much. There's too much technology involved in today's No one fryer should have all that technology. Prices. What did we use to fry? You just said it best. We, <laughs> <laughs> we used to fry in giant cast iron fucking Dutch ovens. And if the shit splatters over and we start a grease fire, then that's what that's, that's what, happens. what happens. Don't dump water. You take the bad it. with the bad and the good with the good. <laughs> that's how we learn. Don't dump water on it. Yeah, good. If if we didn't have if our baking forefathers, soda. if our Put forefathers bake- <laughs> hadn't our started, fry fathers. our fr- the, the fry fathers, our fry daddies, <laughs> our fry daddies, way back there in 1776, <laughs> when they were cooking their fucking mozzarella sticks before a sign of the Declaration of Independence, <laughs> they knew. Don't put water on the fucking grease, grease fire. fire. Close Jesus the lid or put Christ. some goddamn baking soda on it. You degenerates. So, or get a pan and cook a hamburger over the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> the Dylan approach. If it becomes too unruly, just put more shit in the pan. <laughs> so, my dad, uh, in the in the trailer years, some of the more formative years of my life were spent in the, within the confines of four tin walls. <laughs> On wheels, baby. Well, I'm surrounded by other people with other tin walls. Very close. Also Very close on proximity. wheels. Also on wheels. One hill. At any in moment, the whole if there was a seismic town. shift and somehow like the ground level shifted, we'd all end up in the next town. <laughs> We're going swimming, so, boys. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen when I would go over to my dad's? Uh, he was an intrepid cook. <clears throat> he would find himself in situations where. We would feel very inspired. We would watch the original Iron Chef on Food Network at around 1030 at night on a Friday, um, sitting in the living room, and he'd be like, all right, let's make some fried shit. <laughs> Suddenly. Yeah, oh, yeah. The, oh, uh, the, the height of the Iron Chef. <laughs> we were watching people make octopus takoyaki. I remember, I remember uh, when on season four of the Iron Chef, uh, Chef Hamilton <laughs> of <laughs> Hamilton and Beach <laughs> fried um, the friest fries. <laughs> the 
the the sheer majesty of Kitchen Stadium and all of its pageantry and uh, pomp and circumstance inspired us to start up that electric kettle <laughs> with peanut oil in it. Peanut Put that oil. shit on the counter. Were you in, you were in the fucking Rockefeller or? My dad would go to Walmart, and he would buy either the giant jug of canola oil or the giant jug of peanut oil just for the purposes of frying. Like, that was how much we did it. And he would keep that, like, in the pantry on the bottom shelf. But I went to the fucking tops. They had one tiny thing of peanut oil, and it was, like, $6. Really? Yeah. I felt like it wasn't as... I mean, canola, it probably could have been canola. I, that's still had, the cheapest It had the fucking oil. the planter's peanut on it, tipping his hat to me. <laughs> and it was like $6 for... The house is expensive as fuck, though. Yeah, but that's all they had. That was the biggest jar of it. Jug. Well, I mean, when you go to Walmart, you go in that aisle that's got all the oils, they literally got, like, handles. Well, yeah, so, so the tops, it looks, like, it looks like a fucking the antifreeze section of the <laughs> the, the, the car department prestone prestone peanut oil uh but anyway whatever canola peanut who cares all we knew was that we had to get some oil hot in order to fucking fry up some of them giorgio mozzarella sticks we know what giorgio is it's that fucking beige box with the fucking brown cursive letters on it that was like the Here's what here's everything that my dad bought in the 90s. Here's everything he bought. We would go to the store and he'd buy Giorgio mozzarella sticks and they came in that small rectangular box. The same style box that Brown and Serve sausages come in. You know, remember Brown and Serve? A little uh, do shitty, I remember little Brown and Serve? Brownies. I'm pretty sure I got some in the freezer right now. <laughs> do I remember it? <laughs> He so this is oh short term memory loss. I just fucking I'm saw sure. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that if you looked in my dad's freezer in 1990, there were two ice packs for his lunch the next day, four million a- fucking boxes of those mozzarella sticks and jalapeno poppers. Okay, okay, and it was all again in those tiny rectangular boxes that ev- all of that type of shit comes in, and we would get all that shit to get so we would make jalapeno poppers fried fucking uh, mushrooms and fucking potato oh my god then we fire up the oven put fucking potato skins in it you know i'm thinking i'm thinking about brown and serve oh yeah what, when when you say when you brown something you like fry it right mm-hmm. have you ever fried a brown and serve sausage yes you've only microwaved <laughs> them though because you're garbage <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, oh, yeah, no, no, checks out. It checks your, out. Thing, your thing is like you open the package and they're like, they're already brown. What the fuck do I need further action needs to be taken? <laughs> so it microwaves and it's, think, well, it's, it's, it's look brown and serve somewhere in here. I gotta cook them. I know that, but I don't have to brown them. They're already brown, so I'll just serve them and that's it. <laughs> but. Here's what next time if you want to create the ideal brown and serve experience. Nope. <laughs> yeah, a microwave. Take your tiny little pan. There's put your instructions. Fucking stupid pan on the fucking. There's instructions on this box <laughs> that say you can microwave them. That's where they're going. <laughs> Would you see the word microwave on a box? The words for stovetop or pan become pig Latin. <laughs> um. You I know. Put, I don't even. I don't even look for the word microwave. I just look for it where it says min next to it. <laughs> as oh, in minimum effort required. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what what are you supposed to do? Is put those fucking things in the pan and get it. Up Who to says? Like is it a law? All right. I'm not supposed <laughs> brown, to do anything. The breakfast brigade <laughs> to to brown and to serve. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, are you microwaving those sausages? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I am. It says so right on the box. It says I can. Yeah, I'll slap them on a paper towel so the grease gets caught. <laughs> <laughs> it's not bacon, it's a fucking frozen microwave sausage. Those things get greasy when you microwave them. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, it's not, you could tell. 
either way. Because when you put them in the pan, when they're frozen, when they start to thaw, have you can the, see their weight <laughs> express those juices all over the fucking pan. You Suddenly ever get the you... brown and serve patties? <laughs> you open up the box, and they're about the size of a quarter, and you're wondering what fucking... Ha- <laughs> <laughs> what fucking, sandwich am I going to be Thomas, able to put these What on? Thomas English muffin am I going to put this on, <laughs> and one's going to be enough? <laughs> I got to I gotta make, I'm gonna have to put these on fucking slider buns in order to make a goddamn breakfast sandwich. Can't even fit a whole egg on it. I don't understand why those are preferable over the fucking, like, regular sausage patties that are sandwich dice. Which, again, you can microwave, but it's probably better to fry them. Nah. No. Those you just you get the spicy ones from Walmart or the bag of spicy ones. <laughs> Dylan, there was so <laughs> many times, okay, that I was at your house. And what, what, what we had for breakfast was a giant English muffin that was eat, like a flavor <laughs> because Lord knows you're never going to find a fucking plain English muffin at your house. It's going to be a fucking s'mores English muffin or some fucking chicanery. Pumpkin spice. It's going to be a chai latte fucking English muffin. Don't worry, it's so a limited edition it. on the side. <laughs> it's got a fucking holographic wrapper on it. <laughs> get one of them shits out and you fucking split that apart. Or a bagel. Honestly, it was always more a bagel. It was a frozen bagel. Oh, you get the no, frozen we're not Thomas frozen. bagels no. out. No, we never or, froze our or bagels. Bag, bag, that's right. That's right. You, my that was my mom. My mom froze the Thomas bagels. Yeah, we know. We know. We we would freeze them, but only the you extras. guys <laughs> bought the better bagels, which were the big bagels. Yeah. So I'd take an everything bagel, and I'd chop that shit always, in half. Always everything. And then I would toast it, and then I would go in your freezer, and I would pick out one of those fucking egg pucks, <laughs> the frozen Where egg pucks. Egg- Oh, yeah. And then the frozen I think, sausage patty. I think Walmart sold both the egg puck and the, the sausage patty two they separate were in bags. A sack <laughs> in a bag. <laughs> the, the most inefficient packaging design in the, in, in the history of the world. You'd open up the stack of fucking sausage patties fused together, and then you'd open up the pack of. Well, that's because they were all freezer burned. Because they freeze together. <laughs> So we take I take those out of the package. I'd put on a paper plate, I'd put the sausage patty in the egg fucking puck thing. Put those in the microwave. Microwave those into oblivion. So, when in Rome, microwave like the Romans. <laughs> I'd take a piece of this is the only quality product in the whole category. I'd take a piece of Lando bagels? Lakes American cheese. Oh yeah. Put that shit on top of the sausage patty. And then I put a shitload of sriracha or hot sauce over the top of it. That bagel comes back down over the top. And then I had a tummy ache all day. <laughs> I was still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> you were still sleeping. By the time you woke up, I had already had a full <laughs> breakfast. And I was in the process of thinking about what I was going to do for lunch. When you woke up, I, we'd be, I'd be like, all right, get in the car. We're going to fucking wherever. <laughs> And then that would be the day. I have a belly full of fucking uh, shit. I'd eat that for lunch too. Fuck it. <laughs> Depending it on how late I slept, <laughs> it was the only thing I knew that was fucking remotely safe to eat. And I don't mean safe to eat in a quality assurance p- perspective. It was safe to eat from a why the fuck do you eat my sausage patties perspective. <laughs> Nobody was gonna come. <laughs> Nobody was gonna push me down the stairs. Unless it's the last one. Item. Unless you, it was the last one. You don't eat the last one. The last what one gets we, thrown away. What we know for sure is that your house has broken the single record for having the most things rewrapped up in one with one item in it than any other home in America. In the freezer is just unless you've just gone grocery shopping, there's one of everything. You can make one chicken fucking tender. You can make one 
jalapeno popper. <laughs> that's all that's left. You could make an Applebee's sampler platter, but then the minute that you do that, everybody's gonna be like, "Where's my fucking jalapeno poppers?" There was you only mean one left. Jalapeno popper. <laughs> jalapeno popper. Yeah, but I wanted that one. That one. That one wasn't for you. I was gonna wake up. I was gonna wake up and have one jalapeno popper, one chicken tender, one bagel bite for fucking breakfast. <laughs> That was what I was going to have. Oh my you don't God. get it. I had a plan. <laughs> <coughs> oh, my God. I'm fucking sweating, dude. <laughs> sweating. Talking about these fucking sausage sandwiches make me sweat my ass off. <laughs> Whew. Oh, my God. Well, listen. I have a... Uh, I have a question. It's a quandary of mine. Uh, um, been playing any good games lately? About two minutes is how long for it to be browned. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought you were gonna ask a different question. Uh, minute thirty seconds for everything. That was that was your that's your philosophy on life. If that shit can't be cooked in a minute and thirty seconds, why the fuck that? Why? Why, then why what, eat it? What, why, why eat what's it? the problem? <laughs> um, I want to tell you. Uh, I played the Castle of uh, Bloodstained Curse of Bloodstained the Moon. Curse of the Moon <laughs> Symphony of Destruction <laughs> Underwear Stains. <laughs> Curse of the chili. <laughs> Bloodstained skid mark of the jalapeno poppers. Popper. Popper. <laughs> um, it's fantastic. What a fucking... What a $10 buy if there ever was one. Hot buy. For, ten, for a scant $10 for a... For the price of a couple bags of farm rich mozzarella sticks oh, and a dude. box of jalapeno poppers. Price, price went up, dude. I, you might be able to get one bag in a box of jalapeno poppers. All right. Well, unless they on sale, you, still, you, you can still get, like, get the same amount of enjoyment. Two for 10? If you get like a two for 10 deal, you could get a bag of poppers. I'm going to tell you, <laughs> I think at this point, now that we've gone through that whole discussion, I have like every grocery in my fridge right now, but I'm probably gonna go to Price Chopper and buy a bag of fucking mozzarella. Like Becky's gonna get home later and she's gonna be like, "What the fuck did you do?" Do you have a I'm deep like, fryer? No, I do not. You might want to go to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Going through my cart. <laughs> one deep fryer, and one fucking... bag farm rich, and one <laughs> big old gallon. <laughs> I'm going to do the self-checkout for this because <laughs> I don't want somebody looks. to see my shame. Look, I, I don't want looks. Yeah. I mean, because uh, there's no other purpose for this. <laughs> it is what it is. What I'm showing you is what I'm about to do. I am what I there's is. No, it's not going to happen tomorrow. It's going to happen right now. I'm going to come home and I'm going to pour this gigantic jug of oil into this electric coil and it is going to make me physically ill. I will be clutching my abdomen later. I tr trust, trust that I say that. Um, but I do uh, like think that sense. that game is really yeah. fucking good. Do you? Yeah. It's my $10 game of the month. That's high praise. No. And it's only June 2nd. No. For, <laughs> but it came out last month. For, yeah, but, you know, fuck you. That's my $10 game of the month. <laughs> <laughs> Brent's $10 uh, game of the month. Da, 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 da. Um, yep, I really enjoyed that. And uh, what else have I been playing? That's uh, all you had to say is you really enjoy it. You're going to talk about it? No, I will talk about it. It's Castlevania. I will one. I will or, give you this caveat. It's probably I am playing it on casual mode. Um, which 
allows me to not throw my machine Switch. across the room. Switch. You playing in half humbled? I'm playing it on fucking uh, Super Ultimate Mega Pussy Mode. No, no. You're playing it in handheld mode? Yes. Which is the only way to play it. How's that analog stick, baby? Oh, it's real bad. <laughs> I mean, really, both ways of playing it is horrific. That's why I did it in uh, um, Pussy Mode, because I knew that if I was going to either try to play this with the directional buttons, which are stupid on the Switch... Which like, are just that, buttons. <laughs> that are just buttons. It's like <laughs> buttons that are in a direction. They're not directional buttons. They are buttons that are arranged in a way. <laughs> so what, you know, uh, fucking unusable. So the, And also they're in a weird space because if, it, whatever. That's neither here nor there. No. So analog stick, I'm like, all right, this is going to be probably real bad. Fine, if I put fine. Because what veteran gives you is knockback. And not mm, unlimited yeah, lives, which I don't care about the unlimited lives part. That's fine. Like, I really what I wanted out of the veteran mode is, or out of the pussy mode, I don't care if I have unlimited lives. That doesn't matter to me. Like, I'll I, I'll take the challenge of not being able to just fucking keep respawning or whatever. That's totally cool. That's such a. But weird... what I do not want is the knockback mechanic. I fucking hate that. I but hate that that was a thing. I mean, I it's, not, it's not Castlevania, so... It's not the Castlevania that I... Whatever. Yeah, Listen, it is. if you like Symphony even, of the Night, isn't there the knockback knock mechanic in that, yes, there is. But it doesn't... It doesn't... The way that the levels are designed, you never end up falling down a fucking chasm because some shit knocked you back. You get knocked back, and then you can continue to play the game. The level design doesn't allow for that. This game... The level design is like, we're going to put a boss, if you're going to play it on veteran mode, we're going to put a boss in front of you. And then behind you, it's a 500 foot crevice that if you miss one time, you will get knocked. And that means that now the four players that you've acquired over the game, one of them is unusable. And it's the one that's going to be the best to complete this boss. So fuck you. Anyway, so I put it on casual. Um, the... Andrew was playing it, and, like, he got the one boss, and one of the characters, like, you needed the wizard to beat it, and... I don't know if I experienced that. He, like, the wizard died, so he had to, like, basically kill himself and restart the whole level, just so he could have the wizard uh, at that point. Which seems kind of bad. Yeah, that's really not that great. Although I will tell you... Because I guess uh, the wizard has a, uh, like, a shield... Mm -hmm. Like a round you shield, yeah, so uh, the boss is undamageable, and then he does like a suck thing. That yep. suck, suck. <laughs> he does like a suck thing, and it it's like one hit. It's like a one shot kill. Wow. So what you need is when he does the suck, you have the barrier around you, and it that's how yeah. you do damage to him. So if you don't have the wizard at that point, you you Holy literally shit. can't beat him. I think that might have to do with the fact that. There's something. There's a mechanic to the game that I didn't. I didn't think about while I was playing it, which I think gives it the replay value. Is that as you go through the map, if you start the character, if you start as a certain character on the map, it's going to bring you to different places. Obviously, the guy that can turn into a bat and fly is going to bring you to different like yeah. map locations if you start it that way. So that's why I think probably you might end up with a scenario where if you start a map with the wizard, it's going to give you the map that leads to the boss that you need to beat with the wizard and vice versa. Like if you, you know, if you started with the girl, yeah, the high, the high that jump, makes sense, but the boss that does that. I guess you, it isn't, listen, it's kinda, not that great. You're kind of, you, that, that, I mean, say that makes, makes it make kind of sense, but at the same time, these characters are supposed to die. So yeah. if you end up getting to a certain point where, you it yeah, be sure you start sure you started, started with all four characters active, but you don't. Yeah, so That's sure you, you started with the one character, but chances of you making it all through the level, you never. Uh, I I haven't made. I've probably made it through one level with one character. Yeah, the, the whole time without switching. Some of them you can't. It's impossible because the other like you know the fucking skeleton dudes who point in a direction are like, obviously you need to be the bat to fucking do this. So you have to you know. 
there's a couple different ways to go in certain scenarios, but there are some that seem to force you to do something. Hmm. Um, it doesn't for again for a ten dollar game, it's really not that much of a detriment. Or the um, Brent's ten dollar game. <laughs> um, the background is not like the background designs. They're really, really, really good. They're like, um, they're right up there with like, uh, they're right up there with uh, some of the best castle, the old best old Castlevanias out there, like uh, Rondo and Dracula X, and uh, some of the like some of the best sprite design that's out there. Uh-huh. And the cape and their capabilities are increased fucking exponentially. Um, with the with the increased power comes like amazing moving backgrounds and uh great level design and set pieces and all of these different things and awesome like very detailed boss designs and ma- uh models and shit like that so overall it's it's really is right up there with like when they did that game for the mummy and everybody yeah. was like what the fuck is the mummy like, demastered? This awesome, this awesome fucking like retro like sixteen bit arcade game comes out for this movie, and then like this throwaway Kickstarter milestone title ends up being like uh, an amazing Castlevania game, like of its own of it in its own right, like it, just as a nice little like a little treat. They're like, oh, here's a little treat, and ends up being like a great game. You could probably play like. See, three like, four times and get a lot of enjoyment out of it the, uh, the mummy once you actually like look into it it's like oh okay i guess it kind of makes sense that these people made a good game is because it was like way forward and oh yeah good. well so the, they, do, the they do a lot of this one too well y- make no, great games yeah yeah well um no i'm not i was just saying like the, that's what makes sense what actually is yeah way forward they do the shanti half Blood Genie, whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, yeah. Whatever that a lot of people like. So, like, they, they have made good games before. What worries the... what worries me about this is this was made by Inti Creates. Inti Designs. Who did, Inti Designs, who did or the... Creates, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah who did the uh, Master Blaster Zero on the Switch. Blaster Master... Master Blaster. Blaster Master. Blaster Master Zero. They did that on the Switch... Uh-huh. The, they're not doing the Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Well, yeah, that's that's the <laughs> the studio that's being contracted. So what by... worries me is that, that that still has a chance to not be good just because this was good. Oh, it has. <laughs> oh my God, it um, it has it has such <laughs> a great possibility of being profoundly bad. Only because which which kind of su- sucks, especially for you, because it's like this is right it's up your alley. It's this Symphony of the Night fucking clone, basically, and like you see this and you're like, oh, blood, all right, all right, a blood stain. Game. Oh, and it's really good, and but like it has yeah. no bearing. It is on worrying. If it doesn't, the, uh, it's not. It's not worrying. I'm not saying just because this is good uh, that the, the other one's gonna be bad <laughs> or like. Yeah. Like if this was bad, that the other one was gonna be bad. You know too, what the but... vibe? You know what the vibe it gives me is it gives me like Mighty Number no. Nine type of vibes, and that's a little scary. Because yeah, because the controls are really in Symphony of the Night. What make that game? The way you move around that world, like how, um, how for the time. Well, it's, I mean, it's the same guy that did Symphony of the Night is doing this. So, Ega, yeah, but so you're gonna. I don't think the controls are what you're gonna worry about. <laughs> but when I'm when I'm seeing it like come out, it looks like things are a lot like slower or smoother, or like more like glidey, kind of like you're like almost like um. I could be like power ups or shit like in the game. You never know, like until yeah. you get like your base. What they're showing could be. What, uh, it's obviously it's got like Symphony Night fucking equip shit that you could like equip this and that, so you yeah. never know what is uh, actually equipped to that character or what special moves they have at the point that they're showing you in the game. So it's kind of like the move from, it's kind of like the move from like 
Marvel versus Capcom oh. three when uh, to Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. When which call it has uh, Elliot Card in the beginning of Symphony of the Night, he's real floaty when he's got all his gear on. Is he not? That, yeah, because he does have a. Um, yeah, that's true. He's uh, when he's got the um, when he's got all of the Alucard stuff on. He's got a little bit of a like a different fall mechanic, and he's yeah. also got like a trail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they they do take that into account. I think also maybe the. Uh, I I don't think I'm nervous. I, I'm gonna buy the fucking game. <laughs> uh, it's there's no no fucking bow to doubt it. I'm gonna buy the goddamn thing. So that's what it is. Um, and I'm hoping that I'm I'm more I'm more nervous for the people that are like, oh, this one's good. So I'm gonna buy the this this one, mm-hmm. and it's <laughs> I'm reserving. I'm it's... reserving my judgment. Um, but the thing is, though, we've gotten we've gotten a couple titles over time that have largely mimicked the the. Um, overall feel of Castlevania SOTN like Ori and the Blind Forces, but it's kind of, that's more floaty too, though. Well, uh, not, not even in not even other games. I'm saying in the Castlevania franchise itself, like Circle mm-hmm. of the Moon and um, Dawn the of DS Sorrow. One, yeah, all of those games, like they're they still hold up as the greatest games in the franchise. The ones that came out for DS, um, Harmony of Dissonance was fucking awesome. Like that, can, Harmony of Dissonance, Dissonance, Circle of the Moon, and um, Harmony of Sorrow. There's there's like three or four of them. All had great, no, like Dawn the of, original Dawn of Sorrow, Dawn of, Dawn of Sorrow, Harmony of Dissonance, and Circle of the Moon. Something like that. Yeah. Um, all so- had great character designs. All used the hardware appropriately had 3d acceleration just like the original um had very good and fluid controls had the rpg elements had different weapons and also employed and touchscreen like, bullshit oh yeah Woo, I Woo, uh, i'm there. drawing a pentagram <laughs> preach satan hell listen pizza i was pizza okay with mozzarella it. No, a lot of people weren't <laughs> i was okay with it yeah that's like one I of the was fine. one of the first castlevania games i actually beat was dawn of sorrow Oh, I beat the fuck out of that game. Holy shit. I mean, and I, you know me. I don't beat fucking shit for games. <laughs> that was one that, like, I, I destroyed <laughs> out of the very few at that time that I did. Um, And now, I've, well, the Devil May Cry 3 Deluxe Edition I beat, too, on hard. Which is like, how did I even do that? Thinking about and the way that I play games crying today. Crying about knockback. <laughs> Oh my, yeah, crying about knockback, and yet I played in a Castlevania game. (laughs) Um, I'm going to turn one of the basic mechanics of Castlevania just right off. Just going to turn it right off. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I thought I wanted to do was maybe just play it like that way through the first time. And because I've never, I never played any of the old Castlevania games. So I I really. It kind of sucks that it's like a knockback and also not unlimited lives like there's not like that's an what i was saying i wanted a mode where i was just like that's okay if i die because the level <laughs> sucks or I'm, I'm bad at it uh i just want not to i want to be able to play it where it feels like a normal platformer instead of like the shit where it's like Dah! Dah! like it's like i don't want that i'm at least for now and then i'll try it later hopefully maybe injecting a little bit more challenge it was funny andrew andrew cousin the other day and he's like it's like man that, that, that uh blood stain made me want to plug my well oh he was testing out he got like one of the 8-bit though controllers mm-hmm. the uh the super nintendo one and yep. he got the little wireless receiver for this the the snes classic so mm-hmm. that you can use the controller on the snes classic yeah. wirelessly so he was testing it out and he's like i booted up castlevania Four Super Castlevania Four, and he's like, "That game is fucking awesome." <laughs> it's really good. That's the one that I forgot too. Like Ron- Rondo X and and uh, Four, those are like the they're fucking stellar. Like they're really good games. I think um, the, only, well, the only problem people had with Four was it was too easy, right? Is that is that, um, that one? 
It's like a little on the easy side. Yeah, but it looked real good. I mean, that was the thing. Was it like you know you end up at you're you're in the and, new era and it's like holy shit, this looks fucking great. It's not it's not a pissy little red fucking all red character that looks like garbage. I love that fucking character. I mean, I do too in a very nostalgic way. But honestly, it's always going to be for me about like shit that that the little sprites, like, that little that little red. Uh, what, who was it in the first one? Uh, Richter Belmont was yeah, the first one. That, I think, he, I think that, that's killer. probably looks better than fucking Mario does. Uh, yes, for the time, <laughs> pretty remarkable that they were able to do that. <laughs> um, oh my god, I think I got a, I forgot to plug in my fucking laptop. This shit's gonna run out of goddamn battery. <laughs> god. I'm just sitting here and I'm watching that shit tick down, and it's gonna be like, that's the end of the oh. oh. Um, but actually I do think I need to end this episode because I'm going to be honest with you. I got to turn on this fucking air conditioner. <laughs> sure. And then go get some about the games you've been playing. And I didn't even get a chance to talk about my fucking 16, 18 hours. I'm in a persona five. Great. Oh, all right. <laughs> Probably could have left your air conditioner on because I didn't hear it at all when it was actually on. Mm. <laughs> so. Well, let's for, uh, turn it on and drown your ass out while you talk about Persona. <laughs> <laughs> you might, you might want to go a little higher than that. Whoosh. <laughs> ah. Oh, my God. No, we can end right here if you want. Oh, it's up to you. Do you want to no, talk no, about no, Persona or do you want to save it for I'll the next just, episode? We can say it. maybe I'll be farther along in the next episode. So Yeah, actually, maybe just get you get yourself an, uh, a valid critique of it and then also uh, go get yourself some mozzarella sticks because that's uh, – uh, Gotta. That's on the menu. It is. I'm, I'm going to tell Becky right some... when she gets home. I'm like, I want some fucking mozzarella sticks. Listen. <laughs> Listen. I want some pizza, though. But oh, I want some mozzarella you, sticks. Mm-hmm. But I want some, All some, of that shit. Some of that za, dude. Fucking za. Oh, za, dude. I got a pizza. I got a flatbread pizza here. Maybe I'll do that today. Uh, flatbread pizza get, and some mozz. Make myself fucking flatbread pizza. Get some fucking mozzarella sticks. And I got... Uh, couple of different fucking things in there that I could pull with it so I don't Shit. know how I don't know how I feel about you definitely putting those mozzarella sticks in the oven the farm rich ones come out good in the oven that's yeah. the only mozzarella stick you can put in the oven and it even has a chance of replicating something in the deep fryer that's true and I mean I could even just do a pot like I have a Dutch oven here uh, yeah you do that I could fry some shit in <laughs> if I wanted to do it that way but hard to control the temp on that. That's the only problem. That dirty oil that you got up in your fryer, you can control that I just that changed it. All right. Jesus. Then made go get some, your mozzarella sticks. Ridiculous. Made some chicken strips in it last night. Chicken strips. <laughs> chicken strips. <laughs> and on that illustrious uh. note, we are going to conclude the podcast so that we can both go get greasy delights and treats and uh, make ourselves sick. I'm always so, sick, dude. Sick as sick. fuck. What up? Sick, if you're looking sick, for more, sick, if you're looking sick, for more sick, 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 sick podcasts, you can go to the link below in the description to find all of our amusing discussions about life, liberty, and the pursuit of mozzarella sticks. This has been, of course, the jalapeno popper podcast. I'm out.